So what impact has thinking about accessibility on, on your online teaching has on your residential teaching or vice versa? Well, a lot of the impacts are sort of both small and large. Uh, one of the impacts that was really cool is the, the deaf student that I had back in 2007, 2008, back in West Hall. Um, I just wondered what happened. And uh, just this week, uh, I got a LinkedIn request hmm. from that student. And I haven't reached out to him or anything, but the student's working. The student's oh, got a job nice. out in Silicon Valley. And it's like, okay, that's cool, because I, I had no idea how it was going to turn out. And, uh, and that's sort of a, a joyful thing. Probably the, the biggest impact that I've felt like I've had is uh, teaching programmers, blind programmers in India. And so through my MOOC, I made contacts in India and they adopted my materials and taught it to, to blind programmers. And uh, blind, blind programmers are underemployed. And mm. so it it's, turns out it's something that blind people can do really well mm -hmm. if once they get past the, the difficulty of learning it. And so it's really exciting as an engineer and a programmer myself to be helping young people have a career potentially in programming who have uh, visual limitations. And so I'm working now with a, a nonprofit organization and we have regular communications and um, I have been to India now a couple of times, and what is most joyful for me is the fact that it's an iterative process. So they started using my materials, and they mm -hmm. told me how I could improve mm -hmm. them, and then I can improve my materials, mm -hmm. and I can meet them, and I can go meet my students, and I can get feedback. And so this is a, a place where I think we're doing good, but also I am learning and becoming a better teacher as a result. Yeah. Um, I guess. What was my biggest, I had my, all right, so I guess if I were to think about accessibility and where it's led me to, is that I've just become much more involved. Mm -hmm. I've really started taking a lot of training. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest surprise is that you think that there's some sort of magic course you can take in accessibility, <laughs> and then you will be an accessibility expert. Mm -hmm. but when I go to these different conferences, I was like, well, I already knew that. Oh, you find little bits and pieces, but there isn't some checklist you can mark off. And what I find really empowering about that is I find a lot of people have you know, some sort of imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. And so if we can encourage more people to realize like you can be on the forefront of accessibility just by making small, you know, very careful choices with your material, we can make a huge impact. Yeah. And so this idea that accessibility isn't something you go and get your PhD in mm. yet. You know, or even your bachelor's. But here at University of Michigan, we're actually thinking about what kind of academic programs can we put together, not only to support students who have special needs um, for accessibility, but also so that everyone can study it and we can make it more of a commonplace idea. Um, and then second, I think, it's this realization that, you know, disabilities are everywhere. Uh, halfway through teaching my, or creating my online course, I had a traumatic brain injury and you know, I had to relearn the alphabet and make all these little tiny adjustments to my day. And I don't consider myself as someone who has you know, a disability, um, but then people point out, oh, but, but you do. Like, you, you struggle with things other people don't struggle with. And I think there's a lot of people out there who could benefit from someone taking the time to rethink how they're presenting material. And so if we are sending that message out um, that everyone's learning is important, um, even if it's not the traditional way, then again, I think that's something that University of Michigan could be really proud of. Yeah. I wonder, mm -hmm. think back on how many students you and we have graduated mm -hmm. who know how to build websites, mm -hmm. who are good at product management, mm -hmm. who are good at web design, who are naturally and joyfully aware of accessibility issues. I wonder how, what those students that you've produced and we've produced, not just by the material that you've taught them, but by the example that you set to all those students, how will they impact the world going forward? I mean, th that's, that's the dream. <laughs> I mean, I, think, I really think it is. I think this idea that, um, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of the leaders in the best motto. I, yeah. I, no, I prefer the, you know, the um, uncommon education for the common man. Like that, that that's my, my favorite. 
And I feel like that's what we're doing. We're trying to go out there and say, hey, everyone, you can learn something. And we want to make it a great experience for you. Yeah, this is a wonderful conversation. Mm -hmm. So before we end the video, do you have any last thought or mm -hmm. um, the message you want to deliver to the audience through this video? So, so for me, it's, it's, it's really been an interesting journey in that I am always quick to find technical solutions mm -hmm. to problems, whether it be diagrams or, or visual videos or whatever. And what I'm actually coming back to after all this time and all this effort is that a book, a simple textual narrative that can be read, that can be downloaded, that can be spoken, a book with really good narrative is still in this day and age with all this technology that we carry around, a book is a powerful way to learn. And I am starting to think that the when I am building a class, I think to myself, consciously build a book. Because that's the learning that's the most portable and can be used in the most contexts. Um, I guess my final thought would just be, you know, thank you to the people who cared enough to watch this. Um, it's people who, who take that interest and are willing to learn a little bit that are going to make as much of a dis difference as people who are building the systems. And so um, I'm glad that people have taken an interest in this and I hope it continues.